Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Uh, I'm going to go straight into the news. I do want to say we got the high def there and uh, the lower quality live cam right there. So unless it's 530 in the morning, 428, 2014, you're probably going to want to watch this one where the camera goes the opposite direction as opposed to that one. All right, guys, I have uh, this is frightening news. I do want to say before I even begin that I'm not going to say that this is what's causing or this is what this is going to cause, but I think it's going to lead in a, this could be it. What I'm saying is the mark of the beast. When you're, I remember growing up, everything was the mark of the beast. Uh, you had a cell phone, it's got an RFID chip in it, therefore you mark of the beast. Um, I'm going to say before I begin uh, my commentary on this, that up front that I am a Christian, but I'm going to go ahead and put this to non-believers as well. I'm going to ask this question. Are you one of these people that do not believe in any, any existence of any ability, not person, ability beyond what you see in front of you? Are you one of those people? If you are, you probably won't like this show. But if you believe that there is something out there, what am I talking about? I believe that uh, Jesus Christ is God in human form. You may not. However, do you believe in that there's ever prophets? Do you believe that there has ever been prophecy? Okay. Because if you do, then a very significant prophecy is coming true. Uh, Non-believers do not have to believe that the warning was given to John by Christ, which it was in the Bible. But you don't have to believe in that. You simply have to believe that somebody spelled out something so perfectly as to name your hand and your forehead as being the catalyst to implementation of a device that will limit your ability to buy and sell and that these people will be your leaders and they will force you to worship something whether you want to or not. That's the prediction. Um, try to make a prediction today that 2,000 years from now is going to work that succinctly. It's impossible for that to be a coincidence. And you don't need to be a Christian to have interest in this story. I didn't want anybody to zone out. Uh, the other thing is... I think this is important because if this isn't the mark of the beast, and again, they've said it with everything from cell phones to uh, tattoos. Um, if it isn't, it does raise the question of what will your stance be if and when it is. And uh, any look around you at technology, it's not a far-fetched notion. So with those things in mind, we will go to Max Slavo from shtfpplan.com. And he causes all the small, the great, and the rich, and the poor, and the free men, and the slaves to be given the mark on their right hand or on their forehead. And he provides that no man will be able to buy nor sell except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. Um, again, it doesn't say anything about bartering. And uh, you might laugh, but if they start implementing these chips, I can guarantee you the first people that will go to a bartering system will be the Amish. Um, bartering, uh, gold and silver, those are ways around this, if that is what it is. You simply create your own market amongst yourselves. Um, technologies, it does, am I, is the correct views telling you how to avoid the mark of the beast? At least for the first phase, yes, I am. Uh, technologies designed specifically to track and monitor human beings have been in development for the last two decades. In the virtual realm, he writes, software programs are now capable of watching us in real time, going so far as to make predictions about our future behaviors, and there is a link to that, and sending alerts to the appropriate monitoring station depending on how a computer algorithm flags your activities. This is, in and of itself, a very scary proposition. Now, keep in mind, that is all fact. That is not what some of you might call religious mumbo-jumbo. That actually is scientific fact. What may be even scarier, however, is that what's happening in the physical realm. According to researchers working on human-embedded microchips, 
It is only a matter of time before these systems achieve widespread acceptance, and there's many links in this story. Chances are you're carrying a couple of RFID chips right now, and if you are, they're sending out a 15-digit number that identifies you to both cameras. That number can be picked up by what's called an ISO-compliant scanner, and they're everywhere too. It's not possible to interact with society in a meaningful way by not having a mobile phone. I think human implants are likely going to be the very same route. It would be such a disadvantage to have the implant that essentially becomes not optional. Now again, if they don't put it in my body, I'm not a techophobe, okay? I'm in an industrial music band. There is enough technology on stage when we're playing to light the White House. We have... A computer, a backup computer in case it dies, and it's got all the whoop did whoop did whoop did whoop did whoop did We don't really sample major sections of music, but sound effects and things like that will sample. Guitarist, bassist, sometimes percussion. I play two keyboards. My brother has a keyboard. He's got a theremin. We've got vocalists. You get the point. I'm not a techno foe. I have a degree in IMT. I don't care if they use the technology, but they are not embedding it in Sam IB's skin. Who's with me? Comment line. Your initial reaction to this idea may be one of disbelief. There is no way society would accept such a device. Why would anyone want to implant this into their body? Consider for a moment, it says, where we are right now. For decades, Americans rejected the notion that they would submit to being tracked or recorded. Well, now just about every American carries a mobile phone. They're so prevalent, in fact, that many consider it a right. Again, I'm not one of these people that are thinking the two are related. But the convenience line that he is drawing between the two and the mass acceptance, it does. Um, it says one can simply disconnect from the grid by throwing away their cell phone, but uh, the direction of these new monitoring devices are taking our moving coupled with continued government expansion of surveillance suggests that microchip RFID technology will eventually be non-voluntary. Uh, Michael Snyder at The Truth Wins, he quoted very often on uh, this show, asks, what will you do when you can no longer buy or sell without submitting to biometric identification? He writes, this tech not technology is going to keep spreading and it's going to become harder and harder to avoid it. And it is easy to imagine that a tyrannical government could do this kind of technology. If it wanted to, it could use it to literally track the movements and behavior of everyone. And one day it will become so pervasive that you won't be able to open a bank account or get a credit card or even buy anything without either having your hand or your face scanned first. All right, you didn't tune in to hear me read. Uh, Mr. Sam I.B., you're asking, what is the way around it? Well, I'm sure they'll clamp down on these things inevitably, but... Let's look at a few things that we know. You can live without a bank account. How do I know this? Because I do it every day. I do not trust them. I've been I've, I'm a member of Bally's for a while. Yeah, chubby me. I was a member of Bally's for a while. They were pulling double payments out of my account instead of monthly payments. They bounced me. The bank let them do it. So I, I was pretty much done with banks at that point. I don't trust them. Um, look what they did to Cyprus. Look what they're doing uh, everywhere they've gone for that matter. No, it's a disaster. How do you live without banks? Rely on money orders a lot. I don't want to bore my listeners. Go to themediaspeaks.com and look up how to live without banks. I have a whole article on it. It tells you exactly how to do it. Um, buying and selling. You know, the, the Bible always mentions not worshipping gold. Well, do you know that one of the things that led to the crash of the Roman Empire was fiat currency, a, uh, in equivalency to like paper money. It's one of the things that crashed the Roman Empire. Well, the Bible kind of warns not to worship such things, but it says that the man who owns gold is a secure man. Not the man who hoards it and is a greedy bastard with it. Those who own gold. Gold, silver, will prevent you from needing the currencies that they're going to make you have. Um, credit cards are becoming a worse and worse idea. Um, these are ways around it initially. Um, Again, who knows you know, what they're going to do at knife point, gun point, sword point, whatever. 
the fear is that they will generally be accepted by technology and as soon it won't even be considered strange to people that just grew up with it, like a cell phone. So, I mean, it's something to look into. I spent some time on that story because it matters. So go and look it up and ask yourself these questions. Um, I've given you some ways around it. Can you think of more ways around it? Leave them in my comment line. I'd love to hear from you. Hit subscribe while you're here. Uh, Dailycaller.com. Lawsuit. Cops found nothing in raids, so they planted drugs to frame an innocent woman. Uh, do all cops do this? No. But as I read these stories, do a lot more cops do this than I thought? Yes. How about you? California cops planted drugs in a woman's home to frame her after finding nothing in their illegal search of her home, a lawsuit alleges. That's a poorly constructed sentence, but I digress. Allison Ross has filed a federal lawsuit against the Santa Clara Sheriff's Department crime lab and 12 officers that she claims participated in a conspiracy to plant drugs in her house and frame her for a crime that she didn't commit. Ross was initially charged with being in the influence of methamphetamine, but the case against her was thrown out because the district attorney determined that the police made false statements about Ross's arrest. Most shocking of all, it says, Ross's lawsuit alleges that dash cam footage actually recorded the police discussing their plan to plant drugs inside her house. Do you ever see those criminals that just talk openly with people that they hardly know, and your business partner, yo? And uh, they're an undercover cop. Those people are always considered idiots because maybe they were a little too trusting. How dumb would you have to be to be in a cop car that be a cop that you know that the dash cam is recording and then you just start yammering about how you're going to... I'm, I'm live on the air on, on Media Speaks right now. I'm live on the Correct View streaming. Well, how about if I give a nice long dissertation about how I'm going to rob a bank? There's a camera. How dumb are they? Not, I'm glad they're not going to be on the force, not just because they're dishonest, but because they're dumb. The, in the incident transpired on New Year's Eve of 09. Wheels of justice move awful slow, don't they? It's 14, people. Deputies arrested Ross's husband for unspecified reasons while he was at a neighbor's house. They then came to Ross's home, detained her, and searched the premises. Boss, Ross did not permit them to perform the search, and she heard one officer tell another one that they had not obtained a warrant, according to the courthouse news. They ransacked the house, but found nothing criminal. Again, they wouldn't have had a right to have used it anyway. The Fourth Amendment does matter, but again, underscore innocent. Dashcam footage caught them admitting as much. The house is clean, there is no meth in the house, said one officer, according to the complaint. The officers then discussed taking white powder from the police vehicle and planting it into the house. There's going to be an F-bomb coming. It's a quote. If you don't like it, skip ahead 10 seconds. We're going to spike that and we're going to spike him. I got the meth in the fucking car. Police reported that they found two bags of white powder inside the house, although it was later proven to be false. Ross also believes that the crime lab tampered with evidence. Her lawsuit alleges false imprisonment, malicious persecution, negligent hiring, and conspiracy. So good. It says the lawsuit also brings up other questions. If the district attorney's office dismissed the charges due to false statements, why haven't the people who made these false statements been prosecuted for perjury? That would be the cops. And why are these particular police officers still on the job? Um, guys, Curtain email, InfoWars, Tiny Agenda 21 Homes for the Homeless. Now, I'm not going to attack this the way that everybody else did. I don't mean radio, I don't mean radioactive waste. I don't mean anything that's going to hurt somebody. But if you can use uh, casein, junkyard scrap, cheap metals, if you can make a home for a homeless person that is not made out of anything toxic, I don't have a problem. Here's what I have a problem with. This is why I was chanting Agenda 21 is Agenda 666 on my uh, Bilderberg Why It Mattered to Me movie. It's on my channel. Look it up. Free. Watch it. Rate it. Um, what bothers me the most is the way that they're weaseling this in. Well, if you're against this, you don't want to help the poor. You're one of those mean libertarian people. You're an anarchist survival of the fittest and you hate the poor 
I was poor for so long, it's not even funny. Um, no. I hate what they're doing because they are trying to get all of us to accept well, the homeless people do it. Maybe we should have a smaller place. Maybe you don't need as many. I, my girlfriend and I, we have a three-bedroom. She's got her own room for her girly, so stuff. Uh, she smokes cigarettes there and pretends nobody knows it. I've got the studio in one of the rooms. Of course, we have the bedroom. We don't need all those rooms. Sam. We should consolidate. It's good for the planet. Even though ClimateGate.com has tons of proof that we're not warming the planet. Um, no, no, Sam. You hate the poor people. They're going to want all of us to live in these smaller and smaller areas. Now, I'm one of those freaks of nature. Uh, if I could live anywhere in the world, I would probably want to live in right smack in the middle of New York City. Man, I love it. Manhattan, give it to me. Yes, I want to be able to, I like club, want to go to clubs. Um, I want to I go to Chinese restaurants at 3 in the morning. I have a city that never sleeps. Zip, 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 zip. Yes, take me there. I'll be thrilled. That's not everybody's cup of tea. But Agenda 21 wants that to be everybody's cup of tea. And when I finally do go to New York to live someday, they're going to want me to live in one of these little tiny micro apartments because it's good for the environment. I've got news for you. Japan ruined the last place that I wanted to live. That would have been Los Angeles, California prior to Fukushima. Now if you live there, you have a death wish. Um, I don't want New York ruined for me. I really don't. For, again, man is not warming the planet. In addition to epodments, rabbit hutch-like apartments of 200 square feet, the homeless, unemployed, and poor may soon be relegated to mini homes, tiny dwellings made of straw, case, and junk scrap, and other cheap materials. Uh, MPH Online wants to make mini home communities viable, cost effective, and sustainable. Always run from that word. In response to the economic crisis, it cites the example of Al Graham's community first village in Austin, Texas. While helping the poor is admirable, we have to ask why is there an economic crisis? Why are millions of Americans in underemployed or unemployed? Sheltering folks is certainly required, but so is making sure a tiny international financial cartel does not have the power to command and destroy economies at will. And again, this is what it's tied into, getting us cheap and then ramming Agenda 21 down our throats. For those of you that don't know, please look up Agenda 21. Uh, in a nutshell, it um, would dictate everything from where you can drive to how much it costs to heat your home and how big your home may even be allowed to be, decided by the United Nations. The current economic crisis was created by the Federal Reserve. It manufactured the housing bubble that burst and took down the economy. It was engineered no less than 10 economic recessions since 1950 and admits to unreleasing the Great Depression. So let's keep everybody nice and poor and then tell everybody how it helps the environment for you to be poor. Here, live in this little house. Get off your land, Mr. Bundy. Don't let it happen, people. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGangi reporting for the media speaks, asking you to go to the Arcadia Grill. Why? Because the Arcadia Grill has delicious food that you're going to absolutely love. Ravioli, they have a full bar. They've got really, really good chicken. Anything with chicken there that you can get your hands on is delicious. Let them know that Sam sent you. Tell Maria, heard about it on The Correct Views. While you're sitting there eating your delicious food, Go to Facebook.com, look up Mike McLaughlin, Archangel underscore 44703. He's also on Facebook, Mike McLaughlin. He is a writer of poetry and fiction and short stories, and he sells them. And he gets his word out by uh, letting people like me know. So make sure you go to Facebook, uh, look up Mike McLaughlin, and let him know as well that you would like to get some of his stories. Dailycaller.com, another university stops students from handing out the Constitution. If you're a student and you're listening to this and you like me and you want to do something, I'm going to do something cool because Sam's a good guy. I like the keyboard tattoo he's got. I like him. It's cool. I want to do something for him. Hand out the Constitution in your school. Two students are suing the University of Hawaii for violating their First Amendment rights after administrators prevented them from distributing copies of the U.S. Constitution, demonstrating a frightening lack of knowledge about the very real document that they are attempting to censor. <laughs> That's great. Uh, 
Students Merritt Birch and Anthony Vizone, members of the Young Americans for Liberty chapter of UH slash Hilo, hyphen, were prevented from uh, handing out copies of the Constitution at a recruitment event in January. A week later, they were again informed by a censorship-minded administrator that their First Amendment-protected activities were in violation of school policy. Guess what? Uh, policy does not override constitutional law. Get that through your head. Get that through your head. I know Obama made it all the way through college and didn't get that. But get it through your heads. If you're, at least in Ohio, I'm pretty sure it's everywhere. If you have a concealed carry, if it is a policy that you can't bring your gun in, you cannot be arrested for bringing your gun in. If it's not outlined as being a place where it is illegal, it is not illegal. Against policy, bite me. The students were told that they could only distribute literature within UH Hilo's free speech zone, a small, muddy, frequently flooded area on the edge of campus. Why would our own people want to give our heritage away? I don't get it. I mean, I get why the bankers want to do it, but our own people now, it's trickled down that far. Administrators further clarified their level of respect for students' free speech rights, making comments like, this isn't the 60s anymore, and people can't really protest like that anymore. Don't tell me how to protest. I'll protest any way I damn well please. According to the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education. The First Amendment has now been modified since the 1960s, however, and robustly protects the rights of students at public universities to hold non-disruptive protests, speak their mind, and distribute literature. Thank God. Administrators also maintain that university policy took precedent over constitutional rights, according to the complaint. It's not about your rights in the case. It's about the university policy that you can't approach people, said Alan Cusano, director of student affairs, according to the complaint. Well, then they shouldn't have been allowed to approach them to tell them they couldn't hand them out. It must have been against policy. Greg Lukinoff, president of FIRE, could not immediately be reached for comment, but wrote in a statement that his actions were absolutely acceptable. Yeah, probably to Hitler. He also noted that this was the second recent instance of a college censoring the distribution of copies of the much-hated Constitution. A similar thing happened at Modesto Junior College in California, where student Robert Van Tunen successfully sued MGC for violating his rights. The suit asked for injunctive relief and for the university to pay for students' attorney's fees, so they're not in this for money either, so I hope they win in the win win fully. Washington's blog, two more stories to get to. Friends, a war makes us poor. Preface, many Americans, including influential economists and talking heads, will as wrongly assume that war is good for the economy. Many congressmen assume that cutting pork barrel military spending would hurt their constituents' jobs. As demonstrated below, it isn't true. Nobel Prize winning economist Joseph Stiglitz says that war is bad for the economy. Well, you can tell this in, just by looking at places like Kentucky. No, uh, Spitz wrote in 03, Stiglitz, War is widely thought to be linked to economic good times. The Second World War is often said to have brought the world out of the Depression, and war has since enhanced its reputation as a spur to economic growth. Some even suggest that capitalism needs wars, that without them, a recession would always lurk on the horizon. Now, the gold standard will prevent much of that. Today, we know that that is nonsense. The 1990s boom showed that peace is economically far better than war. The Gulf War in 91 demonstrated that wars can actually be bad for the economy. Stiglitz has also said that this decade's Iraq war has been very bad for the economy, and there are many links in this article to prove all of this that is in it. Former Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan also said that war is bad for the economy. In 91, he said that a prolonged conflict in the Middle East would hurt the economy. And he made the point again in 1999 as a paragraph that pretty much says what I just paraphrased. Um... Military spending may be one, one time been a genuine job creator, writes Mike Lofgren, when weapons were compatible with converted civilian production lines. But today's Rosie the Riveter, and the days of Rosie the Riveter are long gone. Pause for those of you that don't know. 
Um, they were turning uh, the United States Metalworks Foundations and uh, places that made engines and motorcycles and everything else. They were turning them into production lines for the war. They were just converting them over. And you had what was known as Rosie the Riveter. It was this lady that was uh, used as a poster child, literally, um, for the women to join the workforce so that America could win the war. You can't just turn a automobile um, factory, of which we have very few anyway, and have them churning out stealth bombers. Okay, that mentality isn't applicable anymore. Those days are gone with your pager. Most weapons projects are now require relatively little touch labor. Instead, a disappropriate share is siphoned into the high cost of research and development, from which the civilian economy benefits very little. Who benefits? The big bankers that own these things. Exuberant management expenditures, high overhead and out and out padding, including money that flows back into political campaigns. A dollar appropriated for highway construction, health care, or education will likely create more jobs than a dollar for Pentagon weapons procurement. Many more links, many more graphs. Um, I'm going to get to some of it real quick. The New Republic noted in 09, conservative Harvard economist Robert Barrow has argued that increased military spending during World War II actually depressed other parts of the economy. So it wasn't even this great win back then. Um, so many graphs here, I couldn't even get to it if I had an hour to do it. Go and look this up. There, uh, Ron Paul talks about it in 07. Blanchard Economic Research pointed it out in 2001. Uh, liberal economist James Gabriath in 04 talked about it. Quote after quote after quote. You didn't tune in to hear me read, but the proof is in, friends. I, just like we know that Al Gore's proof in science is not in, man is not warming the planet. The proof is in. The war is making us poorer and poorer and poorer. We've been at war nonstop now for how long, and our economy has never looked worse. The last story of the night, the dum dee of the day. Uh, many of you know that I do the dunce cap of the month, once a month. It's the 28th, so it's going to be coming up real soon. I collect dum dee stories throughout the month, and uh, I can't even get to them all in one show, even though they're a half hour long or so. So I do one dum dee at the end of each show, and then I mail out my dunce cap and my dunce award, letting them know how dumb they are once a month. Um, these people at the end of the show do not win the award, but they were too stupid not to cover. Police chief not wanting to talk to police officers is odd. Tim Cushing, Tech Dirt. Yeah. You don't want to talk to a cop, it's odd. This insight into how police think the public should interact with them is certainly enlightening. Via this tweet by Amy Elkins' Advice God Bless blog. The backstory is this. A woman was walking down the street when a motorcycle cop approached her, asked her if she lived in the area, and if she, if she could talk to him. She says his approach made her feel uncomfortable, and she refused and continued on her way. For those of you that don't know, that's her constitutional right, by the way. I thought that maybe he was flirting, she said. I just thought that it was odd. I thought it was odd. I was really sure that I felt uncomfortable because he wasn't because there wasn't anyone around. She says that she was worried she might not even, he might not even be a real cop. So she refused to stop and began jogging away from him. He just crept along beside me on his motorcycle and started saying, Hey ma'am, I want to talk to you. Hey stop ma'am, I want to talk to you. Then my anxiety rose even higher, she said. This was followed shortly thereafter by the cop dismounting, chasing her down, tackling her, and placing her under arrest. The police chief claims this arrest was for walking on the wrong side of the road. Yeah, and the Bundy Ranch was about the tortoise. As well as evading arrest and resisting arrest, despite the fact that she wasn't ultimately charged with anything. How can you be arrested if you're not charged with anything? See, Kyle, even if the preceding events could possibly be dismissed as heresy, Her heresy, wrote to them, hearsay, or something tainted by false impressions and emotions, there's the police chief's responses to questions about this interaction. 
White House Police Chief Craig Shelton says, by law, you're not required to stop and talk to an officer if there's a, not a lawful reason for them stopping you. But he says, normally if a police officer pulls up, in my opinion, it's awful odd for someone just to take off and not want to speak to the off police officer, Shelton said. It's not odd. Yes, it may seem odd to a police officer, but it's not at all odd for citizens, even those committing no real crime. Sheldon justifies the stop with the walking on the wrong side of the street crap to have no desire to talk to police officers. A huge imbalance of power makes conversation uncomfortable. It uses as an analogy here, anyone who's attempted to small talk with their boss understands this. If someone doesn't want to talk to a cop, it's not odd, it's normal. And don't forget, uh, people that go out of their way to speak to cops are usually considered to be terrorists or criminals. That Look it up. It's, they're trained that way. Only a cop, someone who doesn't understand the strain caused by the imbalance of power, could consider this response odd. And when law enforcement officials use the word odd, they actually mean suspicious. Hence, this woman was being chased, tackled, and arrested for walking on the wrong side of the street. Forgive me if that seems odd. Holding a conversation with a cop without somehow appearing nervous, fidgety, or otherwise strained, all natural body responses that will be read by most cops as signs of guilt isn't something that most people can do. Knowing that these common reactions will only serve to alert cops to theoretical criminal behavior further exacerbates the situation. Beyond that, it says, there's other assertions Shelton makes in defense of his officer's actions. First, he claims that the cop's motorcycle and uniform clearly indicated that he was a cop and not some bad guy seeking to do harm. The motorcycle has a patch on both sides of the gas tank. It's black and white and says a White House police and has red and blue lights on it. White House Police Chief Craig Shelton said, so why, so you have to take it for what it is. Do you think he's a White House police 